One of the advantages of working in Aurora is that it fully supports layers. So you may have a part of the image that you want to bring back and not have it be processed as an HDR. Well, this is very easy to do by adding it as its own layer. If you come up to the Layers menu here, you can click a button and choose to add a new image layer or a new original image layer. This new image layer is going to let you grab any file. So, for example, I can navigate and choose one of the original images here from the folder, go to Sources, and take a look here at this underexposed area for the windows. I can click Open, and it's going to add that into the scene as its own layer. There it is. Or let's go back here, and we can choose to add a new original image layer, and it's going to be able to put that into the scene. You see that it basically duplicated the base layer and dropped it in again, and this one could then be developed separately. For example, maybe I want to pull the exposure down a little bit on that one, and then add a gradient mask. And we can blend the two together from top to bottom, like such. Now what's happened is, if you look at that, essentially the extra layer was blended and it allowed me to put a little bit of darkness at the top up here to really darken the top and ramp down to the bottom. And you can see that mask here and even open it up or paint and actually view the mask, modify it, etc. So for example, I can grab a race here and start to erase away on the windows to reveal those, like such. Now, you see that the shadowy regions are just pulling down on the walls, which is actually quite nice. So I like that. By adding another copy of the merged HDR file, I could develop it separately and then blend it together using the masking tools. However, I also could add in that original layer. The challenge here, though, is that it's not exactly right. So what we want to do here is refine this a bit better so it blends. So let's increase the contrast and click to add a mask. What I'm going to do is choose the paintbrush here and choose to paint. Now we'll just paint here on the windows as such. There we go. And we're painting in the window region. Using the Erase tool, I'm going to refine this a little. There we go. I can get a smaller brush if needed. There. Not bad. And let's adjust the mask here, feathering it out for a very gentle blend and lower the density slightly. There we go. Just a little hint. Good. Now I'll turn the mask off. And what's happened here, if you look very closely, is that we were able to bring out the details. Let's click Done on the masking tools and toggle the visibility. By blending in one of the base exposures for the trees, I was able to bring the trees back to a non-HDR version, which I actually like a little bit here. Now, if I want to split the difference, we can blend the opacity there to mix those results together, but this gave me flexibility. In this case, we had our original image, then we added a new original image layer, which put another copy in that I developed slightly differently and added a custom mask, and then another image, which then encompassed the ability here to actually refine the area outside the windows. Thus, if we compare it to the before and the after, we have significantly better dynamic range, but the ability to really see out the windows and have a more interesting color and definition in the room itself. Now, 
In the case of this particular image, you may recall that we applied a transformation to the layer itself. As such, I want to reuse that transformation on the other copies. Watch. If we take a look here at this interior DNG, I see that the transformations that were applied to this layer were not applied. So what I'm going to do is save a preset. Let's come up with our looks panel here and save this as a look. I'll call it transform. There it is. Now I can select this layer and apply that same transform. And what that did is shifted the image so that it better lines up. Now, let's just adjust the top exposure slightly, and it works well. The mask is still correctly applied, but the image was transformed to match the one down below. Let's do the same thing here for the windows. You can see the shifting there. What I'm going to do is apply that transform preset, and the windows shift to the correct location, and I can further refine the exposure outside the windows. I'm going to pull the exposure down, but lift the highlights and white point up slightly to get a nice brightening. Looks good. Pull that down just slightly, and we're there. So now the transform properties are consistent across all of the layers. So what's important sometimes is as you add these extra layers, consider making a preset that encompasses your transformations.